All right. Just with the interview today, just just keep it honest. Yeah. Cool, calm, level-headed, and just promise me no crying. Yeah, no worries. metal detecting with PJ I'm your adequate host the rock god been a bit quiet I'm off Facebook you know I'm off Facebook I'm done with it yeah Are me, you on? Too. me too I'm done with it um, and also I've got crazy tennis elbow it's crazy tennis elbow ah even doing that can't even why do they call it tennis elbow when I can't even play tennis well maybe, just maybe like, you had love too it's out of control. Get it? Love to? Oh, yeah, that's very good. Leave the jokes to me. <laughs> okay. Okay, really special guest on the channel today. Before I, I, I continue with the interview... <coughs> finish? Before I start with the interview, I'd like to let you know who I'm talking to. She is a private investigator. She was. Doctor, teacher, lecturer... She ran an introduction agency. She's an author. She worked at the fish and chip shops. She's a mother of three. She was a pilot and a high class escort. Did I, so, is that, did I leave, did I leave anything out? But son, I wasn't a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my mum, Dr. Faulkner. Thanks for being on the channel today, mum. Thank you for asking me. No worries. Before I get the interview started, I'd just like to give you, everyone that comes on my channel for the interview gets a gift. Oh, this is nice. So that's just for you. Thank you. Oh, that's Dutch licorice, isn't it? Yeah, that's beautiful. That's very considerate. Thank you, son. No worries. <laughs> No worries. All I right. thought that would be something funny in here, but you're being very nice. Yeah, I wasn't going to do something too rude. My mum, my mum was born in Holland, and uh, I was born in Australia. I'm first generation Australian. Australian, yeah. And I, the reason I'm interviewing mum today is I, I find it very interesting people's heritage, where they come from. How long they've been living in Australia, what, what adversities they faced over in the other countries, how they came to get here, what their parents did. I'm constantly in the streets when I'm working, pulling up people, ask, asking them all sorts of weird. They think I'm weird, but I just find it very, very interesting. Before I kick off the interview, I just want to let you know, my mum is a, she's got a doctor, she's not a medical doctor, but she's got a doctor in International politics. International politics, and she put herself through uni, university, while she was doing all sorts of jobs just to keep us afloat. And she got in the top percentage of the university. Yeah. And that's why they, they paid for your doctrine, didn't they? they? They gave me a scholarship. She got a scholarship. And 
it really blows me away because we get emotional thinking about it. Oh, sweetheart. <laughs> because because uh because it shows you can have a goal. Yeah, it shows that my mum come to Australia at the age of eighteen and couldn't even speak English. So to get all those achievements and um, kick ass and she's done so so well. She's a success story. So and she's also right into she's a creator like me and she's written heaps of novels, heaps of books, self published. And we're going to talk a little bit about this one, but also, also, in the description, I'm going to put my mum's email address. And if you want to buy one of these books, this is the one, Braid Art to Brisbane. And I know in the fence jumpers we got a couple of Dutch people, and um, lots of European. And if you ever want to buy or check out this book, uh, just email mum, and uh, she's got copies. They're cheap as she. Cheap as a couple of grand, it's yours. <coughs> right. <laughs> Enough of the bullshit. So mum, oh, let's kick it off. Okay. Where were you uh, just start from just start from the start? Were you born in Breda in Holland? Yeah, Breda is a, a city in Holland. And it's it's you, tourists usually don't go there, but it's a very pretty, pretty city. It's a historical city where we fought the this, this Spanish a few centuries ago. And because you are born there, you've got a strong connection with it, and mm. you're always going back to Holland, and you love the place, don't you? Yeah, I do. It's really nice um, being in Holland because my everybody speaks Dutch, and I don't feel... Um, sort of an outsider but um, when I'm in Holland I want to be in Australia when I'm in Australia I want to be in, in Holland and I think that's the same for a lot of migrants yeah they love two countries what year you're born and and how long were you in Breda and just just your journey to Australia all right I was born in 1958 and um, later a couple of years after that, my parents moved to um, Ecuador in, Ec South, in South America. Why did they move? What were your parents doing? Well, my dad was an uh, agriculturist, so he, he was he was trained in tropical plants. Tropical fruits. Yeah, so he had tropical plants. Yeah, so he had to go overseas to work in his area of expertise. Ah, that's what I was like a work work posting. Yes. So, so we went to Ecuador for a couple of years and then we went to Suriname where we stayed the longest. And then Suriname was a Dutch colony and it wanted to become independent. So there was a lot of protests on the streets and So just so you moved to Suriname, South America, what age? Um, I would have been about four. Yep, yep. And we left about eleven. So just, just on Suriname, majority all the locals they're all dark skinned Yeah, they were. There, there was a big mixture. They were from India, China, Africa. It was very multicultural, and there was a, a statue of five girls from all different ethnic groups in the middle of the city to celebrate the multiculturalism of Suriname. I'm going to flash some pictures on the screen now of Suriname. It's really funny. I've been researching a fair bit about Suriname, and there's a lot. The streets are full of Dutch buildings there still. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm showing the pictures on the screen now. You can see how it's still very Dutch, and there's a lot of Chinese in in. Um, oh yes. Of course there is, but in in Suriname and a lot of Chinese restaurants and corner shops are all owned by the Chinese. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, I remember we used to buy our peanut butter and we used to slice the peanut butter off a big 
big hunk of peanut butter and they used to slice a little bit off and wrap it up in paper and that's how you used to buy peanut butter in those days. Yuck! That was yum. Was it? Yeah, it was good. So you were there very young, four, four-ish, and then from there, from Suriname, well, so we've gone from Holland to Ecuador, and now Ecuador to Suriname. Which is on top of Brazil. I'm showing you a picture right now on the screen, exactly where, where it is. And from there, you your dad applied... For... to Im The first time he yeah. applied when we were in Suriname to go to Australia, because my dad's got a twin brother who works in Australia because he wasn't Australian but he was Dutch but he was uh, in uh, the he worked on a sh he was a first steamer from just below captain oh, on, yeah. on, on the ship yeah so he worked for a Dutch company but he was posted in Australia so they lived in Australia and he wanted to catch up with his brother he yeah he, he thought I'll go where my twin brother is yep because in Suriname they wanted all the Dutch people to get, they wanted us all out, which yeah. you, you can't blame them. Who wants their colonial people? Yeah, the Dutch well, were, the Dutch were colonising everywhere. Yeah. So oh, we so effectively got kicked out of Suriname. Yeah, more or less. You know what year? Yeah, 1971 we left, but before that, I think in 1969. My father applied to, to Australia to immigrate because we could tell it was going to happen. Yeah. That that we had to leave. So, but we, but because my father has dark skin, um, they wouldn't let him come into Australia in in 1969. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. because of the white Australia policy, my dad application was rejected. I'll put a little thing on the screen what actual white Australian policy was. A lot of the metal detectorists, mum, they're very, they re they're researchers, they're intelligent, they got a love and passion for history. So I already know they know what it is. But in 1901, uh, the government designed this uh, white Australian policy, and that was to limit non-British migration to Australia. Yeah. So my opa applied for migration to immigration to Australia. Yeah, and because he was partly Indonesian, his mother was Indonesian, he had dark skin and so they didn't want Yeah, that's where you get your we had dark skin from, our skin. olive skin. Yeah. I'm a little bit Indo. Yeah. 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 And your size too, you know, yeah. I may be little, but I can go <laughs> up the coconut trees just like, <laughs> like Opa could. My Opa, my, my granddad, mum, because we, granddad in Dutch is it's Opa, so is Opa, yeah. And I remember even at an old, uh, old age, he could just go boom up the coconut trees. Freaking amazing. And uh, it's true. He was a yeah, top like top like bit out there. Um, so you got denied. You couldn't move to Australia. Yep. What was the feeling around? Do you remember what the emotion, what the how that affected the family, or it well, was just what yeah. happens then? Well, we were all surprised and a bit shocked, but um, you know, my we still had to move out of. Yes. Yeah, you're um, right. You still had to move out because it was becoming unrest. They were kicking out the uh, the white Dutch people. What? Well. well in in Suriname, he was seen as Dutch. Doesn't yeah. matter what colour skin he had. Yeah. Because he worked for the Dutch company. We we lived in a banana plantation, and to this day, I cannot eat a banana. It's just horrible. That will happen. Yeah, and we used to swim in a in a creek where there were crocodiles and had canoes there and. We used to, yeah, it was, it was a good childhood. Good childhood? Yeah. But so you didn't play PlayStation or Xbox? No, they didn't have them then. Yeah. You didn't play on your iPhone? No, we didn't have a no. phone, yeah. Ah. So it was a very uh, 
It was like me. I'd grown up on the Sunshine Coast as a kid, always at the beach and mucking around with mates and yeah. all, a lot of outdoorsy stuff. It's totally different now. Why Australia policy came in, you had to get out of Suriname, out of South, South America. Where'd you go? So we went back to um, Holland to reassess where, where other places could be. But Did it have to be a Dutch colonised place? No, just anywhere where anyway. you could find a job. Okay. So, two years later, we went back to Holland. But in that two years, changes happened. And um, by the time we were in Holland for a couple of years, the Dutch Australia policy was um, being pulled apart and um, we got permission to migrate. So, in 1971, April 11, we arrived in Melbourne. Alright, in Melbourne? Yeah, because oh. that's where the ship le came first. Talk. And then we went to Sydney. Just wait. How long do you go on the ship for, and were you in first class or economy? Oh no, we were in economy. We were... We were um, Describe the ship. What's the ship like? Was the made of metal or wood? Well, it was Coconut. terrible. I got molested in the movie theatre, which which was horrible. Yeah. And then I went to tell my parents, and mum was just telling my dad that she'd been molested in the, on the, on the in the cabin. So the, they showed no respect for people who were not paying their way. Of course, and, and we, we were supported by the government. Yeah. So the women got... Um, Treated like shit. Yeah. Fuck. But anyway... What? what? We, we, we survived it all, and we, it's not as bad as it sounded. It's just not you got nice. You got touched up. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so a lot of, I can imagine a, a lot of worse stuff happened on the boat than that. Yeah, yeah. So you probably... I was lucky. Probably lucky. So, how long does it take on a boat to get from a couple, I think a couple it of weeks? Was a month. A yeah. month? Yeah. A yeah. month? Yeah. Yeah, we did meet other kids there. So as a kid, you play and it was okay. And did you have rooms to sleep or just seats? Well, or just sleep we, on the deck? Well, we had just one room we had to share. Because in the... In early days, you, men and women were separated, but by 1970, the whole family could sleep in one room. So we had two beds, two beds, and two beds on top of each other. What do you call them? Bunk beds. Bunk beds, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was mainly just Dutch on the boat? Yeah, and English. And, and English? Yeah. Ah. So then, a month on the boat. It was a Greek, Greek ship. It's a Greek ship. Greek staff. Yep. Yeah. So, was, do you remember lots of big waves? Like, was it really rough on the oceans at some places? Yeah, we we did get sick. And what I remember is we stopped in South Africa, and um, my my we we left the ship because you have a day to look around. So my dad said, oh, we'll catch a cab. But the cab wouldn't let him in because he was dark. So in South Africa, they, they was with the white government. Oh, and yeah. They, Apart apartheid. A apartheid. Yeah. Apartheid. Yes. So my dad got very upset and he showed his Dutch passport. So then we were allowed in the in the taxi, but it was very humiliating to be treated in such a racist, racist way, yeah. It's a bit of a weird spot for your dad being Olive, eh? Yeah. White yeah. and like... Yeah. It was a bit weird. Fuck, it was that so weird. racist back then. Yeah. Fuck! Now yeah. we're taking people in the country, That's we, right. we want them in here. It's That's totally right. opposite. That's right. So you stopped at Salarini and you got to Australia and, and, and now we're a month on the boat and you're in Melbourne. Yeah, where my father's twin brother lived. Oh, good. 
So we met his family. And you, how old were you then? Let's let's. Twelve. So you were twelve. Could yeah. you could you speak English? No, no. But at all. No. Now on the boat when you got to Melbourne, how much luggage do you have? Well, we only went out for the day. Like they stopped the boat for the day. Where? In Melbourne. Oh, and then, okay. And then we went back, and then we went to Sydney and that's where we got off and then we had to go to the train and the train brought us to Roma Street in Brisbane and then a bus took us to Waco Hostel. Waco Hostel. Uh, if anyone's been metal detecting with me we <laughs> have metal detected that site many times. But how much luggage? What do you bring? When you, when you, when you migrate from another country on a ship to... You must just have the clothes on your back. Yeah, you wouldn't have the... you wouldn't have your microwave kettle. No, no, we bites. didn't have any of that. No, you didn't even have that just, anyway. Just clothes. Yeah, just clothes and toiletries and shoes and stuff. Yeah, we had to buy everything. So we stayed in the hostel for six months, and we first time we drank tea with milk in it, and. Ate Australian English, more English food. Yeah. And my mother, she never had to work before. We always had servants when we were in the colonial countries. But now she had to go and clean toilets in the hospital in the city. That was her job. And my father had always been a manager, but he had to go and work in a factory. So they... So... Yeah, so they had a bit tough yeah. from what they were used to. Yeah. yeah. They were used to a privileged really? life. Yeah, mm. we had servants and stuff. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But then you come to Australia and, there's, and it's... Then you became the servant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my mum had to do all cleaning and, well, they had to do something to get start to get some money in. We had to buy a car. That's where we met uh, an, another Dutch family. And when you, so you 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 you, you moved to Wakeol Hostel and and just just explain uh, the Wakeol Hostel to everyone. And and it's near Goodna, just yeah. twenty minutes from Brisbane, and that's a, a centre where all the migrants go. Yeah, all of them. Yeah, well, that it was think, Chinese or different. Yeah, we had all different nationalities. We made French with Danish people, Swedish, English, German, French. That's mm. that's the, there were other nationalities, yeah. but we weren't friends with everybody. And you're so, um, and you're speaking Dutch. Yeah. So just do a little bit of Dutch. Pretend you're talking to a kid, and I'll be I'll be a kid in the hostel. Hello. <laughs> they speak Dutch, like no, because yeah. no one. So you can imagine in the hostel, they're all just speaking their native tongue. Yeah, we're and, all speaking broken all, English. Yeah, bro broken English. So do some Dutch to me. I'll be say you, you, I'm a French kid. You're just running to in in the hostel, and you're and you want to talk to me. What is your name? Wee oui, wee. Oui. <laughs> uh, wee oui, wee. Oui. Uh, uh, croissant. <laughs> croissant. Was there a lot of that going on? It's funny, kids, well, what you, kids what? actually find a way to muck around without much. They know, yeah. they know, you just don't have to talk much. Yeah. They tell you their name pretty quick, and then you go muck around, so... So, yeah, so you were 12? Yeah. And, and what did you think of Australia? What did you think when you got there? This... Yeah. And what was your dad doing? What did he do? What was the first well, job? He, he, in a factory, you had to um, lift wood in a factory the, every day. He had to go like that. With He's not strong enough to do that. No, and he, he caused an accident. Someone cut his thumb off oh, from cut. the machine. Oh, I'll cut that bit out of the interview. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, no, but my no. dad was What the so fuck were you doing, Opa? <laughs> My dad was so sick with worry what he did to that man. He thought that man was going to do payback. Oh, yeah. But so the Gestapo week, over. The week later, he said to my dad, oh, I'm so glad it happened. I got a good payout from Compo. So 
So he said it was worse while losing the top of his thumb because yeah. he got a big payout. Well, you got my attention now. <laughs> Talk about compo and payouts. Um, but what, what I really liked was, in hindsight, is that your other old wife from your father yep. had a shop in Waco Hostel. Okay. And he was a very, very good businessman. And because you can't be more clever than having a shop in the area where you're the only shop there. Yes. So you can imagine how profit, profitable that was. Oh, yeah. Because there's nowhere else to go. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's good business. That's good business. It's always been very good with business, your whole family. My, my father, his dad, my other opa, he's Dutch as well, when they came off the boat, had six, 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 kids. six kids, and they only had the clothes on their back. And he was such a good businessman, uh, he opened the, uh, the first fish and chip shop in Waco, in the hostel. Yeah. And then after that, he got his real estate license, and he was the first real estate agent in Anala. Yeah. And that that's where the, the money... That was the days when people could afford to buy houses, not like today. So, so Oprah was working in a wood. You were 12. What school did you go to? When you're in Goodna. So you went to Goodna Primary, and is that where you first started to learn English? Yes. How was that? So we went, I went to a normal class, but um, for every couple of hours every day, I had to go to a special class oh, where yeah. they taught the migrant kids English. Yeah. So that was, yeah. And then because you're always yakking to other kids, you learn you English pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. Like when I, mum took me to Holland when I was 12, 12 and I was picking up, we were there for the month because I was submersed in it and probably because I hear all my family talk Dutch at the family reunions, I, I picked it up. I remember getting some sentences out, maybe yeah. not, and all but the, it was easy, it was easy. You knew all the swear words in the second day. you are gone to Goodnut Primary and you're starting to learn English. Yeah. What colour skin was everyone there? White, mostly white. Yeah. Because even though we could come in now, uh, there wasn't a lot. Of, there wasn't a lot of um, dark coloured people. Yeah. And there were no indigenous people. I can't remember. Yeah. That's probably all changed now. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I think that area now is very multicultural. It's very it? multicultural. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you're, you're trying to spot the white fella out there now. Yeah. It's good, it's great. We live there. Yeah, and it's lovely. We love it. I'm glad your kids are growing up with all these different ethnic groups. and Yep. It's good, yeah. So you were at school. And, and then when we went to high school, we went to Oxley High. Oxley and High? All the migrant kids usually went to Oxley High. And um, but at that, when you were 12 and Opa was working, yeah. and Oma, my grandma, she got a job? Yeah, she got a job cleaning toilets in the hospital in the, in the city. Yeah. But once we bought a car from this other Dutch, and this is what happens with migrants, they're always attracted to people with a similar background. So we did get to meet more Dutch people yeah. at first. And um, once we had a car, we realized we had to buy a house and dad did have some money. So we bought a house in Jamboree Heights for $14,000. Imagine buying a house for $14,000. Wouldn't that be nice? Incredible. You should have bought three. <laughs> Just tell, so you were really young and what was the household like? You were cooking. Yeah, well, once we moved to Jambri Heights, my mother changed her job to working in a corner shop. Yep. And not long after she'd been working there, say 12 months, the 
owner of the corner shop said, I'm going to sell it, I'm going back to England. He was an English man. And he said, because you, I like you, he said to mum, you can get the first option to buy the shop. Oh. So they bought the shop. And then all us kids had to work in the shop too, in before school, after school. Yep. And that was also very normal because yep. the Dragman's family, your other side, they all worked in there for their father too. Yeah. Yeah. So most migrants have the whole family work because you can't afford to pay st uh, too many staff. Well, you probably didn't trust anyone around the till <laughs> you know what I mean yeah maybe you guys are probably stealing more money from the till than yeah we what age did you start smoking I was oh, as soon as I worked the till as soon as I operated the till at my mum's shop well I did I never stole from the till no, but I, I stole the cigarettes <laughs> <laughs> I sold the cigarettes and then I sold them in the school bus to the other kids oh Jesus but yeah. you were doing all the cooking at your house yeah, I had to and do And the all dishes? The, yeah. Why didn't your brothers or sisters do anything? Well, they all, my parents always saw that my sister was going to be the university brain. And she had to study, study, study. And Jeroen, he had to do garden things. Oh, yeah. So I had to do the, uh, and my little brother, Mark, he was just a spoiled brat. Mark, if you can hear me. <laughs> he won't watch. You don't have to do anything. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Oxley Wait, High. Ox, and that's you're where Oxley I met, High. That's where I met your dad. You're at Oxley High now and you met, met my dad. Yeah. And by then your English has gotten pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, but I didn't understand that, that I was doing well. Yeah. I had no confidence. And, um, and then I left at year 10. I went to go nursing, but I couldn't handle the shift work. Yeah. I was really not good with shift work. Yeah, no, that's the worst. And, um, and I had another job too. I had a... This guy came to my dad's shop and said, I should, can you do the type? And my dad goes, yes, and I couldn't. Yeah. So I got a job in, um, in the office typing, and I didn't know how to do anything. Yeah. But he didn't just... want to sack me because he was such a nice guy. <laughs> and he got his wife to come in and try and teach me, but it was hopeless. So he would have come in and gone, Sandy, I need those files filed and I need that report by tomorrow. You'd be like, yep, I'm all over it. I'm on it. I'm on <laughs> I'm it. I'm going, nah, what's filing? <laughs> <laughs> what's <'Cause>, the report? <laughs> what's the report? <laughs> so his wife came to try and teach me and I said, look, I'll just leave this job. Yeah. I know you're not going to fire me, but it's not fair on you. Oh, yeah. So, they, they were really nice in those days. Yeah. So, you were... Because uh, at school I did the academic classes. Yeah. I didn't do that. You're either do learning history, English, yeah. French, and all, all these things, music. Or you're learning typing, shorthand. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I, I was business. Yeah, and I and my dad didn't know what I was doing at school, so he yeah. just said, "Yeah, she can type." Oh yeah. Yeah, they had no idea. Yeah. So that was grade ten. You finished, and that was your first. That was your first jobs, and after that. Then I met your dad. Then you met dad. And then his, you were born. Then I was born, and can you imagine being married to? A Dregman's? So that wouldn't have lasted long. <laughs> no. Huh? My yeah. dad's my dad's full on like me. So Yeah, but he Jody really, wants to leave me too, but anyway. No, he was lovely. It was just Jake's dad. No. Yeah, no, he was a good man, your dad. He is great. He's yeah. great. And it was just that I was immature. He was not as tolerant as he should be. But mostly it was me being immature and yeah, we should never have married. In, if you ask him now, he'll admit to that. We should never have married in the first place. Ah, uh, yeah. We weren't yeah. crazy about each other. We were just... Doing what everyone was doing back then, yeah, I guess. Everyone yeah, was... and he was living in Melbourne, so he was lonely. Yeah. 
So he liked to have company, so... Yeah. So how old were you when you got married? Really young? To Dad? Yeah, 17. Jeez. And was I already born? Oh, no. Or was I? Yeah, I think I was 17. Yeah. And then you were born when yeah. I was 21. Oh, okay. And yeah. what, did, what, does a, what does a wedding dress cost back, back then? $100 also. That would be, that's a lot of money. Even back then, did you, did you, well, with, with now the, now you buy them for three thousand minimum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but we had a, a dressmaker who made it. What was the wedding like? Just a little one. Yeah, just a little one in the backyard. Most people just got married in their backyard, in their parents' backyard. Yeah. And my dad was in the air force. Your dad was in the air force. All his. So, Sisters came, his younger sister was one of my bridesmaids, Jenny. So, oh, nice. So you went down to Melbourne to live? And then I went to Melbourne to live. And you had me, I was born in? Melbourne. What suburb? Leverton? No, you were born in the hospital. Um, the main one in Melbourne? Yeah. Okay. Private. And then that was a six, one of those 50% marriages? The fifty yeah. percent that don't work out because that's what the stat is. Don't, I know. It's just it's everyone. It's not just you, Mum. It's a lot of a lot of them don't. Then we moved to Budrum on the Sunshine Coast or something. <coughs> and I had that's when I had your sisters, your twin sisters, Amy and Jo. Yep. Yep. And we're living at Stanthorpe. Yeah, and that which was is a lovely, three lovely place, wasn't it? Yep, on the granite belt. Apple, apple country and wine country, and you no. had a pretty cool job there. Yeah, I had an introduction agency. Yeah, no, we had not much money. No. Always battling, and you started a introduction agency. And we got a couple of marriages going. That's where you pay to meet someone else. Now everything's on the app. Yeah, now it's. But in the old days, I had to interview them and then see who they matched with, and um, and you hired you your business was doing so well you had to employ someone. But yeah. what was their handicap? Yeah, he was blind. You're not a good businesswoman, are you? <laughs> he was very good on the phone, oh, the, <laughs> but nothing else. And he, <laughs> no, he was. How did you remember that? So. Uh, well, because I used to go in there and move stuff around and <laughs> tell them he was losing everything. Um, so, so you did that. But that didn't work out, so... Oh, it's nothing's forever these days, <laughs> is it? So I took the kids, went back to my parents, and my parents said... Get out. We we're not impressed. <laughs> it's your second marriage, you stuffed up. So they gave me three days. Yep. To find a place, oh, they'd kick me out. Yep. Yeah. Three days. Very supportive parents I had. Yeah. And um, so it's three days to find a little unit. And how old were you then? Young 30s. Yeah, early 30s, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we were going to Budrum Primary on the Sunshine Coast. That's it. A lot of my childhood was on the Sunshine Coast. And for jobs, we live in a, a little tiny unit. Yeah. Sharing bedrooms, all me and the sisters. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and then we got a bigger house. Oh, but back in the unit at Budrum, that's where I see my first ghost. Oh, yes. That's right. And I remember just laying oh. there. And I was laying there. And then I just... Out it was of a the, girl ghost, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, out of the cupboard. The spirit come out of the cupboard and just flew past me. Didn't even look at me. And then went out the door. And I just went... Mum and I ran into Mum and um, was losing it, and then Mum said, yeah, "Have you seen the dad?" Yeah, well, uh, I've I've seen I've seen the similar thing in Stansel when we lived in Stansel. So she must have, the spirit must have come with us. But then I got um, a Buddhist guy to cleanse the house, and th that was it. Yeah. 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 I, I remember that he walked around and cleansed the house, but just on the on the spirit. I'm not a real big spiritual guy, but when we lived in Stanthorpe, uh, we stayed at a house, a property out bush with friends, and I was riding motorbikes, shooting rabbits, and then uh, 
Did you see a spirit or you saw something yeah. weird there? And then at breakfast, mum said, hey, I think I saw a, a man's spirit. And the family said, oh, yeah, that's that's the husband. There's a family of spirits living in this house. Something happened. And yeah, was I, a few saw, of them. I saw the girl, the, ba- the girl you as saw well. The girl. But she was a little, you know. Oh, I'm getting fucking goosebumps. Yeah. And, and in the spiritual world, when they when they feel comfortable with entities, they, they, they go along with them, they follow them and, I don't know, protect them or whatever. But obviously I had twin sisters and the girl was very similar of age and That's she, I think, I think she tagged along and was hanging out, living in the bedroom with us yeah. because she was probably friends with Amy and Joe, my sisters, that looked very similar, same age. Yeah, anyway. Same blonde hair. And blonde hair. And uh, they're so see-through, the, the spirits, but it's, I, I don't see shit. Like, I wasn't even on drugs back then. I didn't start <laughs> no. drugs till I was 18. Maybe that's why you... And, <laughs> and so that was really, really, that was really cool. And, and so you're in, in Budrum, and then you were doing all these jobs, yeah? Yeah. And then you, well, when did you just get sick? We, we were... Well, I Full tried, on battling. I tried another introduction agency, but I realized you just can't make money out of that. So, um... This is my favorite bit. You decided to be a spy. Yeah. Yes. A, a, a private investigator. Well, first I met this solicitor, and he helped me work out that I could serve summonses. Yeah, you got to go. People. You got to go to court. There's a debt. Yeah, if, summons. So if 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 someone's got to go to court, you got to bring them a document that says you have to be there at court. So I was pretty good at that because I didn't look like someone who would. Yeah. So they were they didn't expect to be summoned. But then I thought maybe I'll do private investigation. Unreal. And um, I went. Unreal. And, I went and did a course in Brisbane. Um, and I did some jobs for other companies. Then I thought I'll do my own company, but I was never any good at it. You reckon? Yeah. You probably were. You're just downplaying it. I mean, you blew your cover every time. But besides, <laughs> besides that, you're like, are you tailing me? Maybe. <laughs> or gave it away. Uh, you're fucking up my ass for the last 40 minutes and you're out the front taking photos of the house. <laughs> They'd say, they'd say, I think she'll be driving a Toyota, a white Toyota, and I'll go, okay, I'll go, what does the Toyota look like? I didn't know what car looked like. All right, all right. But it was white, I know what a white car looks like, but I didn't know the brands. So, so it wasn't really for me. No, but just talk about it. It's interesting. Private oh. investigating, people think, oh, she's bugging houses. <laughs> going in their bugging houses, but you're really just following did, cheating husbands. Yeah, it was and most talk. mostly that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and usually you... the one who hires you is already cheating themselves and they just want to blame. They just want to find someone else to blame. Wow, a yeah. way out. Yeah, a way out. I didn't That's, know that. Yeah, yeah. That's what I find anyway. And also but, being a private investigator means you're going through people's bins a lot yeah yeah to find um, evidence of of things because people uh, so if, if you're up to no good don't put it in your bin burn it <laughs> yeah and a lot of stakeouts because i went on a couple of stakeouts with mum and you're just sitting in the car hour after hour after hour just sitting there just watching a house yeah. all day yeah. hey yeah it was fun, but yeah. um, we were never going to get rich on that job. No. Um, but, um, and, and that's when I decided to go to uni. And that's when you decided. And this is the part I'm really proud about with mum, and that's why I wanted to have the interview, because I tried uni, and I dropped out in a few months. It's very, very hard. I was always good at school, but then the university is another level up. You've got to be dedicated. I was chasing girls, doing drugs, all sorts of bad things. And you really got to be dedicated, and it's fucking expensive. And you did that supporting three kids, paying rent. So it would have been a, a, a mission. You you left home not long after that, though, didn't you? Yes, I you, moved out to a you unit. Were living at Malumba. 
I had a unit on Mooloola Bar, on the beach, me and a friend, $95 a week. Wow. Yeah, it was 495 It was really cheap, really cheap, really shit unit, but really cheap. And that's when I went off the rails, but we're not interviewing me, you're interviewing mum. So how many, so they're private investigating, but you did other jobs too, yeah, you're working for tip-top stock in the shelves for bread. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I remember that. You were sec- I was cleaning toilets. Cleaning at, toilets. At the aged care place, yeah. old people's place. Um, Just anything to get by and... Yeah, because... If you live on a single parent pension, you can survive, but if your car breaks down, no. where's the money going to come from? So you have to have another job as well. So I've always had other jobs. And when I went to uni, I did. they gave me jobs there, tutoring students. And then as, as I got to know the staff better, they gave me lecturing jobs. Anyway... You go too far ahead. Oh. What made you? Because that's a big call. That's a big decision. What made you go? Oh, I'm going to study. Well, I'll, I'll, if if you like, I'll tell you what, how I got to that. Yeah. I. Well, I was a, I wasn't very good at private investigation, even though it was fun, and we, I did make enough money to supplement or to pay our bills and that. But I always felt I wasn't a professional. So I thought, I must finish my high school. I hadn't done 11 and 12. So I went to Nambour, TAFE, finished my high school, and surprised, I got high marks. And I went, oh, I'm not as stupid as I thought. Mm. And that that changed everything. And Mm. then the other people in... My class were talking about the university and I thought, oh, I've got better marks than them. If they're going to university, so will I. Yep. And that's how that's how come I went to uni. Yep. And then when you were in uni, Sunshine Coast University was only new? Yeah, it was the second year it was open. And what subjects were you doing? Uh, politics. And tell them how good your marks were from someone who come over at the age of... Well, yeah, but I don't want to brag. And that. you couldn't even speak English to getting distinctions, high distinctions, high distinctions, high distinctions. If you if you if you go to uni, you know high distinctions the top. You can't get any better. And this is from a lady who was cleaning toilets, packing bread on shelves, private investigating, introduction agency, working in fish and chip shops, migrant to getting high distinctions at uni, better than a lot of white. Better than a lot of up and coming smart ass geeks, hey? <laughs> eh? <laughs> geeks, <laughs> fucking hate geeks. Um, oh, they do my head in. So smart. Um, <laughs> you're destroying them. And then, so then you finish your degree in what? International politics. International politics. And and, and while life. you were stu- while you were studying. Yeah. I met oh, no. my, my I met my hus my third husband, Bob. who I've been with for thirty two years now. Yep, Bob. So He's... third time lucky, and it worked out well. But then you got that's when that's when that happened when you were studying, and then you got your degree. Yeah. And then what made you want to keep going? More. You, how many years? How many years at uni were you all up? Ten. Eight. Eight. Yeah. So then you thought, I'm not happy with this degree, I'm going to keep studying. Yeah, well, I first I took the whole family to Brisbane because I got a job working for the Minister for Health. Wendy Edmund? Yes. Yeah, That's and you're up in... remember. Pa- of course, Paddington. Yeah. And you're working in the office, you were... Pre- electorate pre- office. In the electorate office, and you're, pre- pre- you're writing policies and... <laughs> no, I was not. You're changing was, the face. Of, just, you're just changing the face of Australia. But anyway, we're not going to talk about no, it. I was. I was, oh, I was just doing electoral work. You yeah. know, people come and say, "Oh, I need a footpath put in my, in yeah, my area." Something like that. Yeah, and okay. then we pass it on. But it was nice work. But yeah. I got bored, and I was, and that's when I thought I'll do my PhD. 
because I thought the job would be more interesting. Yeah. And then I thought, uh, no. And then I got a scholarship for my PhD, so that solved the money problem. And that's what I did. And what, what's a PhD? It's a doctorate. It's How many years is that? It's, it's three years, but it took me three and a half. Yeah. But some people take ten years to do it, so. Yeah. So three and a half years is pretty good. So you call my mum. Dr. Faulkner. Dr. Faulkner. <laughs> just, I know, it sounds, still sounds just funny. Just saying, just saying. <laughs> no, we don't know. No. I, I remember um, yeah. when we were living on the Sunshine Coast and we're taking, uh, you're, we're pick, you're picking up the kids, you're picking us up. I was at Budrum Primary and my sisters were in the primary school. Yeah. And uh, we had an old Kingswood and we went around the corner a little bit too fast, didn't we? And, oh, yeah. And I... In those days, you didn't have to have seatbelts on. No. So one of the kids slid off, and I had to close the door properly, and she slipped off, ended up in the middle of the road. My, my sister I'm fell out. Of, yeah, out of the car. I'm having a heart attack. Everybody's having a heart attack. And going around the corner, well, uh, and the door swings open, and my sister flies out. And oh, it was crazy. I just had to get that on there so we can never live it down. That's excellent. So we're nearly at the end. You have been we're getting really hot in here. But so then you have got your doctrine, and then that wasn't enough study, was it? You you wanted to study more. So what job? You're like, I want to be a school teacher. Oh yeah, that was a mistake. <laughs> so you wanted to be a school teacher, but so then you went and studied. Again, because that wasn't good enough, that paperwork, you had to go to TAFE or something to be a school teacher? No, back to uni, but just one year, because... Back to uni again? Just, but only one year of my, for teaching skills, which didn't help at all when you got little shits in your class. So then I, they got me a job at um, Serena and... Serena up north? Up north. Morani. Morani. Morani was wonderful. Yeah. Just then Serena and then Gimpy and then... And Gimpy School. You were, t you were teaching at Gimpy School. Yeah. And that's where you fell out of love of teaching, hey? Yeah. I couldn't handle the behaviour of people like my kids, probably. <laughs> no, we were behaved at school. But the kids you were really... Were, um, you were well behaved at school. Yes. Of oh, that school. Um, yeah. They were just out of control. You got no support from parents, and you really fell out, fell out of love of teaching at Gimpy. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Helltown, if you know anything about Gimpy. But the seniors were good. The seniors, the seniors were good. Seniors were always good, no matter what school I was in. The year eleven and twelve were really good to teach um, because they wanted to do well. But the little kids, I couldn't control them. I was, yeah. Was too stressful. Yeah. Uh, so we we are absolutely melting here. Yeah. Um, anything at the end you wanted to say? Anything? So then you're teaching and and now retired. Well, now I'm retired. You, but now you are an um, author. Yes, but I, I, before we talk about my books, I just want to say the thing I'm most proud of is bringing up my kids you want to stop because all that other stuff is just nothing no oh, that's, that's your journey that's your journey We did good. We come good eventually. I did eventually. Yeah, I'm. Um, I'm just really proud of my children because they're all good people. They're not judgmental. You're not. You're never judgmental no, of other people. Never judgmental. I love all, all. 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 You love all your families. And, uh, and all the. You're never, not racist or, or. Yeah, you. You're good people, and that's. To me, that's my success. That. I was able to instill some values into your kids 
and I'm yes, just really that's right. proud, proud of you kids. That's right. Everything else is nothing compared right. to having good kids. That's right. But it's a good story. And you can see how much mum went through to uh, to get where she is today. She's li li living on the Sunshine Coast and she's got a great relationship and she's very happy. And now you, you're still, you're creating. You're a creator like me and now you're into writing books. Stay there. <laughs> Look at this. There's two of those. <laughs> Look at all these books. So mum likes a bit of, real quick, crime. Yes, this, this was the first one. This was Sad and Gimpy. And it was between two political parties uh, and a young boy who's a dentist. And I think his name's Peter or something. But I use the name Peter a lot because of my son. And mm. then... Real um, quick about these. Then these are detective stories. Oh, you love your detective stories. And then this and one was um, in Russia. We went on a cruise in Russia, and so there's a murder and uh, spies in Russia. <laughs> yeah. That was cool. And then when I left um, teaching, I thought I'll do one of about teaching, about a teacher wanting to kill one of the students. <laughs> uh, so, if uh, like I said, if you want to, one of these, this is the one. I mean, if you like the crime novels and all that, but we're just mainly talking about the journey. But it's not. This isn't about mum. It's gen Ge general. And so it starts in the 1950s about Dutch people coming to Australia. So that's 20 years before I actually came. But my mother's, two of my mother's brothers came, or three of them immigrated from Holland to Australia and New Zealand. So I start in that time frame. But a lot of the experiences in the 1950s were the same as the 1970s. So we talk about Wacom Hostel, where we lived and... Where we've metal detect, we've metal detect there. And, yeah. and the stuff they did on the boats, like, because I'm only up to page 70 still. I am really find it hard to read, but anyway. Um, the stuff, it gets into detail. It's really good what they yeah. it's not good what they were doing, but I'm just like, what the fuck was going on back then? Yeah. How they used to, what they do, line them, throw stuff at them or something? Oh yeah, yeah. The, there was still a lot of racism. Even when we came, my dad got spat on when he went to the markets for the shop. He got spat on because he was, wasn't white. But, um, you know, Australia's been a very good country, so um, I'm glad my children live here, for sure. So, you want a copy? Mum will do it for cheap. And uh, the email, click on her email, get in contact with her. Show us some love if you're Dutch. Reach out to mum and have a chat. She'd love it. Yeah, the book is a fiction. It's not, it's not a historical book, but yeah. it's, it's a historical fiction. Yeah, they get it. They so get it. So the characters are made up. Yeah. And it's also a love story. And it's also a love story. And this is what I bought mum, what was in the bag. <laughs> and I know I've been quiet, haven't done many vids and or detecting uh, the tennis elbows just out of control. <laughs> I might just wait till after Christmas, get a machine or whatever, get back into it. But until then, I'm having a enjoy my break, thinking of yous all. I don't do Facebook and love yous. Should we go get a burger? Yes. Righto. Bye.